Good morning. I welcome you to the historic First Baptist Church of Denver. Today is the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. Please join me in proclaiming the call to worship as found in your bulletin. Jesus invited all to servant ministry. Pretense, disharmony, greed have no place in discipleship. Lord, help us to truly become your disciples. Create in us hearts for ministries of compassion and kindness. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, be with us this day. Help us to put our priorities in order so that we may faithfully serve you by serving your people. Heal our spirits. Empower us to follow your ways in all of our days of our lives. Amen. Let us all rise. Today we will be singing Hymn 569 in Christ alone. take your seats, take a look around and wave and greet those around you. If there are any visitors for the first time, we give you a special welcome, especially those joining us online today. 
you may be seated. Good morning once again. My name is Scott Pegues. I serve as pastoral associate today. We welcome to our pulpit Reverend Nancy Darnell, who is filling in for uh, Dr. Henderson as he's away at the Berkeley School for Theology uh, to attend the board retreat. We are looking forward to a wonderful word from her. I will draw just a few announcements to your attention on the back of the bulletin. You can read the details yourself. One, just re as a reminder, I see everyone has remembered, we are continuing to wear our masks and social distancing so we can remain in the sanctuary. That is our goal. Uh, number two, uh, we're starting to increase the number of people who participate in our service. And one way you can participate is by joining our choir. Please see Brendan. Over there. If you are interested, there's an email in your bulletin. We're looking to begin that on October 3rd, which is just around the corner. Now, I'll tell you, we didn't even need to visit on this. Even if you're shy and not sure, check in with Brendan. If you have just the spark of an interest, I know it will be welcomed. Also, right around the corner on Saturday, October 2nd, is our fall cleaning. Contact Kenton Kuhn or the office if you're interested in helping out. Many hands do make light work. And last of all, thank you for joining us today. Let's all stand for again 68 and this During this time of prayer, 
You all are invited to come forward to light a candle in memory or in honor of someone or something, some situation in your life personally. Please feel free to share any joys or any concerns, but please be sensitive about what you might share on behalf of others. Once you light your candle, if you would like, please come over here and share with all of us the reason that you have lit your candle. I lighted two candles this morning. My first one is for all of the Haitian immigrants who are trapped in Florida and Texas, the other south, Texas, and you know it is such a horrible situation, I don't even know what to say about it, but I put it in the hands of those who may know best and in God's hands. The second candle I light <laughs> on behalf of the um, Colorado Buffs yesterday. If any of you watched the game, it was very sad. And this is a prayer request that I am sharing from someone else. But would you now, if you have a prayer, a concern that you would like to share, please come up, light a candle, and then share with us. Let us continue praying together. God, how amazed we continue to be at the stories and words of Jesus as we encounter them in this gospel named for Mark. When Jesus was confronted with the disciples' fears and concerns, he challenged them to stay committed to service. Help us today to reach out to others, not with thought of importance or gain, but in love and compassion, truly caring for each other. When we have done this, we have truly given our hearts and our service in the way Jesus taught the people of his day to live and love. We offer you, as always, the prayer concerns mentioned and those that remain in our hearts and minds. May the light of this morning's candles keep hope alive for us this week. Amen.
and amen. Today's sacred reading comes from the gospel named for Mark, chapter 9, verses 33 through 37. You may find it in your Bible, your Bible app, in the back of your bulletin. However you get there, join me in the hearing of the word. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Feet because they're dusty, 
And the disciples looked at each other like Jesus was crazy because you know how we love you today and how we kind of put you forward and stuff? In that day, children were practically nothing. They counted for not much at all outside their family. I'm not saying they weren't left in their family, but in terms of everybody else, they could care less about you. Well, Jesus said, when you welcome this worthless child, you are welcoming me. You are loving me. You are, you know, following me. And when you do that with me, this is the big one. You are welcoming God. Wow. Well, Miss Jackie today is going to take you back. And she will welcome you. And she will help you. And you know what? After you finish your lesson today, even more than that. Let's pray. Gracious God, for these children, for all children, for all of us in need, thank you for being with us and help us to learn to welcome each other. Amen. Good morning. I am delighted to be here this morning. I thank Brian for this opportunity. I love being with the children, but I was called to the pulpit too, so here I go. In the story this morning, in the scripture this morning, the Son of Man would be killed and rise again. That's the scripture that comes right before our scripture. And at that point, the disciples were afraid to ask Jesus what on earth he meant by that. They didn't want to look stupid. They didn't want to know, maybe, what that meant, because that kind of sounded scary. Or maybe there were some in the back that weren't paying much attention at all. But Jesus then follows that with a walk. They're all on a walk. And the disciples are lagging behind and they are whispering among themselves like I told the children. And Jesus says, well, so what are you arguing about back there? And they were silent once again. They were embarrassed because they knew at this point their competitive power jostling, position seeking, arguing, trying to put themselves first in front of one another, that was something that they already intuitively knew that Jesus would not approve of. So, as I told the children, Jesus said, Come here, sit around me, let's talk. That was their position of learning. But then there were other people around and gathered and they also would hear the things that Jesus would say. Whoever wants to be first must be last of all. Some translations make it even harsher and say slave of all and servant of all. 
brought out a teaching, an illustration of a child, the child that was nearby with the bystanders, those seeking, but I can hear the gasp because this was so unheard of. What are you doing bringing that child here in front of these learned people, these, this teacher, what is he doing? And then immediately Jesus says, when you welcome even this child because of me, then you welcome me. When you welcome this child because of what I've been telling you, what I've been teaching you because of me, you welcome me. And when you welcome this child for me in my name, you welcome the one who sent me. You have invited, you have hosted God in your very presence. Now we've seen, all of us I'm sure, the Sunday school pictures of the lovely, well-manicured, dressed little girls and suited little boys standing around Jesus and that is nothing at all about what Jesus was talking about. Because the children were invisible. They were non-people. They had no economic value. They had no legal protection. They were next to, if not nothing, in terms of the value of the culture of the day. But then Jesus is putting them first. He brings them to the center, the welcome, the let me wash your feet welcome, the here, let me kill a catted fat, fatted calf welcome. Here, let me provide for your safety welcome. Jesus honors this child. Jesus welcomes. Jesus values. Not as an equal, that's different. But Jesus valued the child as a child, a precious child, a child of God. And in that act of welcome, Jesus welcomed God and became that example for all of us. If you welcome the child, you have in that act welcomed me, and in that act welcomed God. And we're not just starting with that good child, freshly changed, smiling baby, but, you know, picture that screaming two-year-old who wants what the two-year-old wants who has a full diaper and we're not real happy with that. And it's annoying and disrupting and Jesus says, that's the child. Even that child, you welcome. Who are we? Who are our children? Like the child, it's the voiceless. It's the powerless. It's the angry. It's the smiling. And we're not leaving out the rich and the famous and the powerful, but we're including and bringing in the others. We are broadening our circle. We don't need to be pastors. 
We don't need to be missionaries or social workers or teachers. We need only to notice and to listen, and when we can, to act on behalf of another, with a helping hand, with a smile on our face, with a good morning, how are you? Something in our circle to broaden our circle a bit. Act. Now, I don't have as many illustrations of children as I did when I had young children at home. So I meet people in the dog park. I have dog park people illustrations now. And there's this one woman in the dog park, and I saw her going around and what she was doing. I didn't see her with a dog, so I, I just asked her which dog was hers, and she said, oh, I don't have one right now. I'm in between, but I'm getting one. And I said, but I see you here, and you're picking up dog poop. <laughs> and she said, well, it's something I can do now that I don't have a dog to watch. I can help other people watch their dogs. I would not have been the first person to raise my hand and say, I'll be that woman. I said, thank you. But somehow that didn't seem quite enough because that was a, to me, that's a huge gift to keep a dog park clean where I can take my puppy to run wild and let me get a good night's sleep. Notice and listen. Notice and listen and act. I had a little girl. She was young. She was eight. And I was baptizing her, and we were in the baptistry, and I, I asked her, what, what does this mean to you? And she said, it isn't magic. And it isn't magic. It is a commitment. It was, it's a saying, I will follow, I will do, I will act, I will listen, I will learn from others. Because others, like that child, had something to say to us. It isn't magic. And I was walking back just a couple of weeks ago with boys and girls. And one came up to me and did a tug on my shirt and said, well, now, I didn't agree with what you just said. <laughs> well, OK. <laughs> did I listen? Did I learn? Well, actually, I didn't listen because other people started screaming and running down the hall, and I thought I should do something about that. But I'm thinking about it, and maybe I've learned, and maybe I will go back and say, you know, you had something you needed to tell me. What is it? But the point of all of this is we are a village. We cannot rear our children without all of us. I mean, we have villages in our neighborhoods. We have villages maybe at work. We have villages, but this is one village, and we have precious gifts who come up here every Sunday. And I can tell you from my experience growing up, it was not the preacher or my Sunday school teachers who made the most difference to me and my feeling welcome. It was actually, in my case, it was mostly the men of the church who paid attention to me. But there were women who were special women and they paid attention to me. And I'm not saying you all have to get to know the name of every single child in this church. I'm not saying you have to know everything about everyone, but darn it, pick one, pick two. Embrace those children, welcome those children. Make sure that they know that they are 
at home here and that they are part of our village. They are very important to me. I know that they are important to you in some way, whether it's just seeing them and, and sort of being, quote, entertained by them on Sunday mornings, but they are more than that. They are gifts, and they are gifted, and they deserve welcoming. Amen. Let us all rise and sing 473. Will you kind of follow me? gifts and pledges of support. They continue to be necessary and meaningful, and I will say vital, to sustain the ministry here at 1373 Grant Street and beyond. Our church community has truly been best blessed by the generosity of support, especially in our offerings, which exceed expectation. But let me remind you that the need in the world and the circumstances of today are indeed great. You can give online by going to rethinkbaptist.org. On the left side, clicking the donate button and giving your offering there. On your way out, you may place it on the plate as we all exit through the east doors onto the patio for our reception. Or you can send it the old way through the mail to 1373 Grant Street. I think it still works. I don't know even the postage these days. But if you choose to, we'll be happy to receive it however you do. And as it's been said every week, we do more together than we can do on our own. We invite you to enjoy the post loop. And again, when the time comes, we'll open the east doors. And we invite all for fellowship and welcome on our patio. For now, I offer us this blessing. Depart now in the fellowship of God, the Mother, Father, Spirit, and Comforter. And as you go, remember, in the goodness of God, you were born into this world. By the grace of God, you are, have been kept all the day long, even until this hour. And by the love of God, fully revealed in the face of Jesus, you are being redeemed. Amen. Amen.